Good morning, YouTube. Dr. Sola coming to you from Lagos, Nigeria. So, this is a flooded lead acid battery. Actually, no, it's an AGM lead acid battery. As you know, we do not do this anymore. This is actually a long battery. And we've been using, if you recall, one of the videos I did, I had two of them. A client, we did some very small systems for it. It's a healthcare center, had a failure in a lead acid battery we installed for them. So we removed one of the two and sent it over to them. I told them to find the good one and leave the bad one. And the bad one is the one that's trying to power this. The inverter that's in there that powers the lights and the boys quarter. So they took the voltage, it was in the sevens, which isn't very promising. And we connected it and the minute we put power to it, it started beeping and the lights went out. So I decided that instead of buying a new one, let me do an experiment which I've done before with lead acid batteries. So if you know, lead acid batteries have these vent areas. So there are two for each, for each area. So one cell, second cell, third cell, fourth cell, fifth cell, six cell as you know the cells are two volts each so what i did is i opened them and let me give you an example i opened it and when i checked this particular cell was badly sulfated you can see the white crusty stuff on top of it and i was like okay should i give up or should i try what i've done before and is a hit on me it's not always very successful so what i did is i got a syringe and I put water in each of the cells. I put, I filled, let me see. And it's not very clear. Yeah, you can see, you see the white stuff in there. It's not supposed to be white. I'll show you one that looks a little better so you understand how it's supposed to look. You can see in that one, that's what it's supposed to look like. But that one was badly sulfated. So what sulfation is, is where the, your liquids, the electrolyte turns solid. And when that happens, it's not necessarily a very good thing. So the first day we put just a little bit of uh, fluids in it. They don't make a difference. Then yesterday evening, I put a um, tiny little syringe and maybe I'll show you a picture of it later. And I put about 10 of the tiny little syringes in each one. Even though I put some the day before, I put about five or six each, I put 10. And yesterday evening, when I touched the sides of the battery, they were warm, they were, they was warm. So a chemical reaction was happening, which was a positive thing. So it was warm all across the cells. So that, that was a positive. And then when we took the charge off, the battery was at about 11 volts and then it settled at 8.5, 8.6 volts in the evening. So it's an improvement from 7 point something volts. It's gone to 8 point something volts. Now before, when you put a charge to this battery, it will spike, it will just go to 12, 13, 14 volts almost instantaneously, which wasn't a good thing. This morning when I started charging, it started, it's been going up very gradually. So for me, that's a positive. I'm seeing a gradual increase in voltage so let me show you what the voltage is at the moment at the moment it's 10.2 10.2 10 10.3 volts we have 5.5 amps going into the battery and that's about 57 watts so what i like about this is you do gradual charges for this stuff you don't want to do a forced charge you don't want to try to squeeze as much into it at the outset and whatever issues you're having you make them worse so right now, I'm charging these very gradually. Well, as the sun picks up, of course, the rate of charge will increase. But what I'm liking is that this is going up very, very slowly. Instead of 8.6 volts, um, slowly made its way to nine. Then went to 9.4 volts. And now it's at 10.3. And it's been about an hour since I've been charging. So hopefully, um, I'll have something positive to report to you. So if you've had any experiences trying to recover uh, lead acid batteries, let me know. So one thing now, this is no longer an AGM, it's not a flooded battery because since you put moisture into it, you've turned it from an AGM, absorbed glass material, 
to an actual flooded battery. So now I need to pay attention to it, add um, distilled water to it every other while to make sure that it doesn't run dry again. So if you've had any experience, yes, I did the Epsom salt routine a while back. If you go back and look in the archives, you find the video where I did the Epsom, Epsom salt routine. I did it with the four click batteries. I've done the baking soda, I've done it all. But today, I want to just do a true tried and simple, something that you can do using a syringe, squirt water into it. The last time I didn't use syringes for these. Squirt water into it and then do a gradual charge to see if I can get the battery back up. So if we get to 11 volts today, I'll be very, very happy because it means that something positive is happening. If we get to 13 or 14 volts, I'll be very instantly, I'll be very unhappy because it means that we have not recovered the battery. So if you think that we can recover the battery, give me a like. If you don't think we could recover the battery, post in the comment section below and tell me why you don't think we could recover the battery. So this is something different. As you know, I swear by lithium batteries and I hate lead acid batteries. And now I'm doing something with a lead acid battery. So once again, this is Dr. Sola coming to you from Lagos, Nigeria. If you're not subscribed, smash the subscribe button. Thank you.